What's up, everybody? If you hear a weird buzzing noise in the background, that's the AC. It's cold, and I got the heat, the heat full blast. So, anyway, what I would like to talk about today, which you could probably tell by the title of this goddamn video, is the Harley Quinn TV series that has just, well, not just came out, but it's been out for, for a minute now. And I've been watching it, and I've been really fucking enjoying it. It's the the shit is is really fucking funny, and like the jokes they hit home. Some of the jokes, mm, not so much. Uh, some some of the jokes just fall completely flat because they're like completely unnecessary. Like the joke about the fact that Harley Quinn uh, had HPV in one of the episodes. I believe that was the first episode. I don't know what the fuck that was about. I don't know why that was necessary, but whatever whatever floats your boat writers whatever and since I don't fucking script this shit I don't write this shit out the met the best I could do to show what I had what my my thoughts on this show is is I just took notes for each episode and just put a pro and a con some episodes actually had lots of cons cuz yeah <laughs> Stupid shit going on. One thing I didn't mention in any of my pros and cons for the, these episodes coming up is that the voice acting. When I first watched it, I watched the, the first episode. I did not like the voice acting. Well, not necessarily didn't like it. The voice acting was on point. It's just that I didn't like the voices for for the characters. But after watching it over and over again, I came to be content with it. I was okay with the voices. Now, for episode one, we're going to first start off with the pro. The pro is, the episode in itself, like, let me, let me tell you right now, the pros are most definitely going to be talking about the story of the episode. Because here it is, highlights Harley's obsessive behavior over Joker. That's basically the premise there. She's very fucking obsessive. Over the goddamn Joker. She cannot leave this man alone. I swear to God. So. The obsessiveness with. Harley. Is. The fact that. Again she can't get over the Joker. Which is. Ties into the comics. Harley Quinn. Is completely obsessed with the Joker. That she completely just. No matter what the Joker did to her, no matter how horrible it was, she still loved him. She still wanted to be with him. And this episode, the first episode, literally highlights that. And I loved it. It highlights how obsessive she is and how she just lets shit go. The Joker was extremely abusive to Harley. And it, the episode basically shines that light that he does not care. He does not love her. And he's just an all-around all, all, all dick to fucking Harley. And it takes Ivy setting up some elaborate fucking uh, scheme to actually show, you know, that, you know, the Joker does not fucking love you, you crazy bitch. Leave this man alone. Like, it, it took Ivy... Setting up a whole ruse to get hard to see that. Now, another pro is the old school dynamic of Harley living with Ivy. I love that. Whenever the Joker and Harley breaks up, like, Harley goes running to Ivy. Automatically goes straight to Ivy and they go on their, on their little adventures and shit like that. It, it's a reoccurring thing. They... Joker and Harley breaks up. Harley runs to Ivy. Harley ends up staying with Ivy until her and Joker make up, and then they and then Harley goes back to Joker. So that whole dynamic, I love it. I love it because, quite honestly, the way people are doing things now, they could actually fuck up that fucking dynamic and just completely shit on it. All right, now over to the cons with. Technically, it's just one for this episode. And in like the part where I mentioned that Ivy made 
an entire um, elaborate scheme to prove to Harley that Joker does not love her? Well, turns out that Ivy did it in a way that required the Riddler to suspend both Batman and Harley over two separate vats of acid. Now, Joker comes in and he basically, uh, the Riddler basically tells Joker to choose who to drop in the acid and who to set free. And of course, Joker chooses Batman. I mean, like, they even did a, de a guessing game. I'm, I'm, I'm like, come on. The, uh, Joker and Batman did a guessing game to see whether or not what they're going to be hold, held over. And yes, it was a vat of, vat of acid. That's important for right after this. Anyway, Joker, <laughs> Joker chooses Batman because, of course, I mean, like, Joker's whole goal, his like his mission in life, is to get the Batman to literally do something bad, do something evil, to see the world like he does, you know, to be more like him. Which is why the Joker, at some points in times, uh, will actually kill anyone who dares to even try to reveal the Batman's secret identity, because it would ruin the fun. Because once the Joker knows it, the fun will eventually end, and and the Joker's not gonna have that. If he's gonna unmask, if someone's gonna reveal uh, Batman's identity, it's gonna be Joker with some giant fucking uh, uh, scheme that he's planned out that it has so many fucking steps that ever, anyone else trying to solve this shit would be completely befuddled. They wouldn't know what the fuck to do. And. So, yeah, like, one, I believe there, it was in the comics, one dude tried to reveal it, and Joker straight up fucking murders the guy. He tries to reveal Batman's secret identity. Joker was not having that shit. But, uh, but yeah, Joker lets Batman, uh, tells Riddler to release Batman and drop Harley. So, that happens. The con is that Batman literally lets Harley fall in the vat of acid while chasing after the Joker. So, Batman gets set free. Joker has not done a damn thing. So I don't see why Batman is chasing after Joker. I also don't see why Batman lets Harley fall in the vat of acid. That is my con because... Um, Batman has always saved Harley. Even from the Joker. And to prove that point... Not too long after that, there's an entire scene where Joker puts a uh, uh, is uh, Harley's memory, and in that memory, Joker gives Harley a fucking grenade and takes off. Batman literally goes up to Harley, snatches the grenade out of her hand, and tosses it, saving Harley's life. Batman has saved Harley from Joker so many fucking times. He has saved Harley so many fucking times. Sometimes unintentionally, accidentally, he doesn't even know he's saving her because at the moment, Joker's about ready to murder her ass and Batman shows up and then Joker's attention shifts completely to Batman instead of killing Harley, which he was going to do at that point in time. So for them to put in a scene where Batman, for some odd fucking reason, just ups and abandons Harley to fall in a vat of acid is amazing to me. Joker confirmed that it's acid. I mean, not Joker. Batman confirms it's acid. Harley confirms it's acid. Riddler said he's going to drop them in acid. They know it's acid. But yet, for some odd reason, Batman just leaves. I swear this is fucking the Batwoman series all over again for no fucking reason. Why would he just abandon Harley to fall in a vat of acid? That is not Batman. Batman will save villains, okay? He will save villains. He's not going to let even a villain just up and die. So that that shit made no sense to me. So th yeah, that that was a con there because again, Batman has saved Harley many 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 times. So I don't see why he would just let her fall into a fucking vat of acid. But anyway, that would be that's that's the end of my pros and cons for episode one. Other like other than that, I fucking love like episode one was good. Despite that con, 
the entire episode is fucking amazing. All right, like I, I'm, I'm again, I'm loving the series. The series is good. Now moving on to episode two. The pro for that is the dynamic between Ivy and fucking Kite Man. Yes, Kite Man. Hell yeah. I, I just. Everything about fucking ca- uh, Kite Man is fucking hilarious. And the whole dynamic between him and Ivy is just hilarious. The moment Kite Man, like, Ivy, this is the whole scene where Ivy is, like, just, like, Harley just fucking abandons Ivy. And then Ivy's just sitting there alone. She realizes she's alone. And then Kite Man comes out of nowhere and just whispers in her fucking ear. <laughs> Oh my god. That that shit had me dying when he did that shit. Like he just like kite man. Hell yeah. Not to mention he he multiple times he opened up his little kite and like knocked a girl into a bowl of punch in different sections of the room. So it's like how many bowls of punch is in this goddamn room? <laughs> And why is this little girl always around when he opens his damn kite that's sitting on his back? Like, 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 why is she always around? I don't know. I just know it's fucking hilarious. Oh my god! In the scene when, when uh, in uh, Ivy's apartment, all oh, that scene. Oh my god! I just couldn't stop laughing at that shit. That shit was. Oh, it was beautiful. Now. Another, it highlights more of how much of a controlling ass Joker is. And, uh, again, I mean, like, he's evil. What, what, do we, what do you expect? He's a controlling asshole. And, and it's like, you see it throughout the, the episode. Like, he steals Bane's food for some... Uh, and, and Bane just lets him fucking do it. Uh, the guy, the villains that, w- that Harley was sitting with... They were laughing at Harley's jokes and shit. And then Joker literally cracks a joke. They laugh. And then he cracks another joke, but it wasn't that it wasn't even funny. And then he like basically forces the other ones to laugh by literally like, hey, come on, laugh. Laugh with me. And, and, and it's like a nervous chuckle. You know? And it's like, what what's going on here? Like, why is Joker controlling? Why are they doing whatever the fuck Joker tells them to do? It, it, it's fucking weird. But it's Joker. He's a controlling ass hat. All right. We're going to move on to a con now. Why did we need to know that Harley has HPV? <laughs> yeah. See, again, I that joke fell so flat because it's like, why? I do not need to know that she has HPV. I don't care. She's a cartoon character. And, I, and I'm guessing they're just trying to highlight uh, something about HPV. Maybe one of the writers has HPV and they're trying to normalize the fact that they are clearly running around having unprotected sex with anyone and everyone and then just trying to make it seem, oh, it's just completely normal because there's a lot of people of the population have HPV. True as that may be, they just show there's a lot of fucking people in America who don't know what a fucking condom is. Seriously, wear a goddamn condom, people. It, it, I mean, like, it, it's pretty fucking cheap. I mean, like, just, just, just buy that shit, and you would, you would avoid STDs just like that, you know? Like, damn. But anyway, another one. Weird scene with. Okay, this one, it was kind. This con probably not, because I was gonna mention about the weird scene. Like, there's a scene with Kite Man and Ivy where Ivy like basically. Like tries to, it's like it's like a bait where she's like tries to insinuate that she's a weak woman or some shit like that, which is why she can't uh, do a heist or some shit like that, which is basically a huge fucking setup. But Kite Man, just just being the idiot that he is, the the hilarious idiot that he is, you can tell by the way he looks when she says that is that he starts rubbing the back of his head. He's clearly nervous about talking to her, and he's like, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I bet. Which you just literally just got baited into agreeing with her 
that she's a weak woman, which is ridiculous since Ivy is one of the most powerful super villains out there. Okay? She is powerful as shit. She literally has the power to destroy the world if she so chooses to do so. She is powerful as fuck. Weak woman, my ass. I don't even know why that was in there. I I, I don't understand why that's there. And then all of a sudden, Harley comes out of nowhere and calls him stupid. And then, you know, the banter between Ivy and Harley was like... <laughs> Kite Man just looks at Ivy and he's like, Do you think I'm stupid? She's like, Don't you? I was like, Ah, oh, that's oh. like that was a joke that it hit and it was it was it was funny. Like the jokes like a lot of the jokes hit. Just some of them just be falling flat and be like, Why the fuck are they there? Why are they there? Anyway, besides that, episode two again was great. Let's move on to episode three. Pro, Harley tries to find a crew like the whole episode, since she actually has a crew already called the Gang of Harleys. Yeah. Yeah, see. That, that episode three, like, they could have done it. They could have put the Gang of Harleys in there. If you don't know who the Gang of Harleys is, um, in the comic book, as uh right now, uh I think the gang of Harleys have been disbanded as of right now because of the whole her boy uh, Harley's new boyfriend getting killed in front of her and a whole slew of shit happened after that. But um I think she's now the new god of chaos. No, I think she quit. She she got the job and didn't quit afterwards, I believe. I gotta reread that chapter again, that issue again. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> Yeah, the Gang of Harley was a group of, it was, let me remember, one, two, I think it was five people. It was four ch four chicks, no. Yeah, I think it was four chicks and one guy. I, I'm not sure if I could remember that correctly. Anyway, <laughs> it, it was a Gang of Harley. She had her own crew. And it was all, and it was all Harley themed, and they had their own colors and, and stuff like that. It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty good, cool. It was all her whole, her own little crew of anti heroes. You feel me? That do shit like you know Deadpool and and, and uh, uh, the Punisher. That's basically what Harley is. She's basically an anti hero at this point in time, except for in this show, she's still you know a villain. So, so I'm guessing that's why they didn't put the gang of Harleys in there. I'm guessing. And I'm get, and that's probably why they just threw their own their own shit in there. It just said, "Hey, let's have a whole mixing pot of fucking people." And another pro of episode three is fucking Kite Man again. Just random fucking appearance from Kite Man. I I don't <laughs> look. It's not only Kite Man. I it's also Frank. Frank. And Kite Man fucking kills me every time they have a goddamn scene. I swear to God. <laughs> they, they, they fucking kill me. Frank the Plant is like, and it's like the little shop of horrors. That plant in the little shop of horrors, that plant was, was fucking hilarious. And Frank reminds me of that fucking plant. But anyway... On to the fucking cons of episode three. The weird thing about Dr. Psycho saying cunt. Why? Like, the moment he calls Wonder Woman cunt, everyone, like, everyone just stops what they're doing. Wonder Woman stops fighting. Even a dog literally stops pissing midstream. A dog Stopped pissing midstream. The fuck? You're telling me that saying calling a bitch a cunt is worse than calling a bitch a bitch? What? Just what? No, 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 no. 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 
Bitch and cunt, I would say, is on the same fucking level of insult. If you're being a bitch, you're a, you're being a bitch. If you're being a cunt, you're a goddamn cunt. However, the joke for the cunt thing goes on throughout the whole fucking episode. Like the me, the moment he says cunt to Wonder Woman, he calls Wonder Woman a cunt. The moment he says that, all of a sudden, people start believing that he hates women because he called Wonder Woman a fucking cunt. It's like, what? What? Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. And, and, and Harley and Ivy, they're just not even, they don't even fucking care that he's called a bit, called her a cunt. Hell, Harley was just like, hey, if I was there, I would have, uh, um, no. I think she said if he had a crew, someone, or if she was there, uh, she would be able to tell him to use the, uh, to say bitch instead of saying the C word. And it's like, just say cunt. And then they, not only that, but they even bleeped out the word cunt. Why? Why are you bleeping out the word cunt? That makes no sense. Jesus Christ. Oh. Now. <laughs> okay. Next. Oh, my God. This is. This one, oh my god, this one, this one, this one right here. Okay, um, <sighs> this con is so long that it's basically scripted. And so basically, <sighs> all right, there's a scene in episode three where Poison Ivy is telling Harley a story, okay? And it's a story about the Queen of Fables. Now, in the Queen of Fables story, they make the Queen of Fables black. Another example of race swapping because the Queen of Fables is actually white. And she's also the mother of Snow White and, and, and blah blah blah. Anyway. Let me just read this shit. Uh, anyway. Because it's, it's more ironic this way. Alright. Uh, Poison Ivy being the all powerful villainess that she is Tells a story about the Queen of Fables as an example of women can't get too powerful or else they be punished like every other villain. And then proceeds to make the comparison that a guy gets sent to Arkham while women get alternative punishments. Arkham is for the criminally insane and powerful villains, which Ivy and Harley broke out of in the first episode, which makes the weird this weird narrative that they're spinning absolutely idiotic. Plus, in the story of the Queen of Fables, it was Snow White who imprisoned her in a book. The Queen of Fables was so powerful that the only way to defeat her was to trap her in, a, in another book after she escaped her prison. The Justice League trapped her in a book because of it. Because if it worked before, do it again. Okay. Let me let me put in some extra extra details there. Like like I mentioned, it was. It was supposed to be a lesson, uh, a lesson as to what happens when a woman gets too powerful. And even the Queen of Fables, who was trapped in the book, is saying if, uh, uh, if a woman gets too powerful, they get set up with this shit, which is being trapped in a book. And it's like, bitch, you, you were, you came, you was trapped by your daughter in a book first, then sent to another dimension. And then when you escaped your prison, which was the book, you started wreaking havoc because Wonder Woman looked like your daughter. So the Queen of Fables wreaked havoc. The Justice League fought her and trapped her in a book of state postal codes. Why postal codes? Because of the fact that the Queen of Fables powers somehow revolve around imagination if she can imagine it she can make it happen which is op as fuck so they had to trap the bitch in a book where she can't use her imagination to escape the prison thus the reason trapping the bitch in a fucking book because you can't contain her anywhere else 
So that whole story makes no sense about women being powerful and getting trapped in a book instead of being sent to Arkham. That makes no fucking sense. Everyone else who gets sent to Arkham is able to be contained within Arkham unless they have some kind of elaborate plan to break out of Arkham with help from the outside. The Queen of Fables is so powerful she could break out of Arkham anytime she fucking want to with no help from the outside. Arkham is for the criminally insane. Everyone is literally crazy. And they make the comparison that if a guy robs a bank, he's a criminal mastermind. If a woman does it, she's a crazy bitch. And it's like, um, you're all crazy. Which is why you get locked up in fucking Arkham. Which is where Harley and Ivy broke out of. In the first episode. Again, it's like... What, what what was the point of this? What was the point of this at all? God damn. All right. I guess it's recording more. I uh, took a little break there. <laughs> Y'all don't know that, but I do. But anyway, let's continue here. Uh, go to episode four. Because I'm done with episode three. That whole Queen of Fables thing was, was, was retarded. Okay, it was retarded. Anyway, uh, episode four. Episode four doesn't have a single con in it. I, I pretty much just like the entire fucking episode in its entirety. Uh, what, uh, one of the pros is Harley steals Batman's car. Yes. Harley... There's been a few, I think Catwoman stole Batman's car before, Harley most definitely stole his car, I think she stole it maybe more than one time, uh, Ivy did it once, I think, I think Ivy did steal his car one time, but, yeah, that is, that, that's a thing, and I love that they actually did it in this episode, uh, the reference with Bat, uh, Batman and Catwoman's relationship, when Ivy, like, mentions that, uh, that Batman uh, is like completely waxed. <laughs> I didn't need to know that, but that shit was funny. Uh, the whole Harley trying to get a nemesis thing was hilarious because, you know, Robin is like l lying his ass off about the whole uh, uh, Harley being a nemesis and shit like that. It was, it was just stupid, okay? It was, it was completely stupid. Uh, the Ivy and Cat, the Ivy and Kite Man thing is continuing, and I, I fucking love it still, because, uh, Ivy ends up going to save Harley's ass because her plan to, uh, expose Robin for the liar that he is kind of turned sour because Robin bled into the pool, which had the shark guy in it, I forgot his name, and, um, yeah, he, uh, he smelt the blood and uh, his shark instincts took over and he tried to kill Robin, which pissed Batman off. And Batman was there beating the shit out of Harley. So Ivy came there to save uh, Harley and she ended up on the show. And then the woman who's hosting the show is talking to Ivy <laughs> and Kite Man sees oh Ivy God. on the show. Nope. And Kite Man literally Not sings okay. the little theme song of the show which is tawny and they start singing it and the fucker is like this has this big ass smile on his face and he's like swaying as he sings it. <laughs> it's fucking stupid uh and uh yeah they have this little uh and i love the, also i love the, the way that he highlighted the fact that joker is like does not like the fact that batman is that is, is ignoring him like, I like how they put that in there. Like, Joker comes in like, like Harley, are you trying to steal my Batman? <laughs> it's like, I love how they threw that little tidbit in there. But yeah, overall, episode four was just fucking great. I, I, I love episode four. Uh, episode five. Uh, I swear to God, episode five, I had the most. Oh my God, I had the most to say about episode five. Like, I don't like, I don't really script my shit, but... The amount of cons that I had for episode 5 is fucking amazing that I just gotta just make it, like, script, okay? Anyway, uh, the pro, Harley tries to find out who she is in a, in a sense. Like, the whole premise of Harley trying to figure out who she is is a good, it's a good, uh, 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 
a good a good story to tell. The whole premise of the episode I like. How they tell this story, however, is shit. It it it's it, it it's shit. And it shits on everything Harley is, really. Now, let's go to the con, which is something I'm literally gonna have to just just read from what from my note here. Because Jesus Christ. Alright. The first con is is that they treat Dr. Psycho like a pervert who who would uh, do gross stuff to Harley while in her mind trying to fix her. Even though he would be the expert for this type of thing, they shit on him while asking for help. It like it, it makes no sense. It really it really does make no sense. Like he's like, yeah, I could fix her, you know, like you know, just go like I can go in her mind, wham bam, thank you, ma'am. It's over, and all of a sudden he's like, "Ew!" I'm not like, like, what do you mean, "ew"? He's basically just saying, "I can get up, I can get up in her mind, and I can just fix whatever's wrong with her, and I can be out of there." That's basically what he's saying, and they're just like, they just started treating him like he's some kind of fucking perv, and it made no sense. You need his help to fix Harley. Why are you shitting on him, trying to make him seem like a pervert all of a sudden? It makes no sense. He hasn't done anything that would classify him as a pervert in the first place. But anyway, continuing. Uh, they may, oh, my God, this shit kind of irritated me there. Uh, they made it seem like Harley was always insane her whole life, which is not the case. And again, it isn't the case. Harley was not always fucking batshit crazy. You know, she was never all the way, she was never like that all the goddamn time. She was never like that, okay? And the, in the episode, they try to make it seem like, yes, she was always this fucking crazy. Which ties into what they're trying to do in this episode. So, just, just keep that shit in your mind. Also, they change it up by having Harley somehow blame everything she has done and who she is on the Joker to the point that she has repressed and changed her own memory so that to her, the Joker pushed her in the acid and made her become Harley Quinn. Then she decides literally in her own mind that the Joker didn't make her the way she is and that she was always like that. Therefore, her torturing, killing, and all-around mass murder of men, women, and children, yes, she did in fact torture and kill children as well with the Joker throughout her entire history. Her and Joker are terrible fucking people, but we love them as characters. Anyway, but they're still terrible fucking people. But anyway, mass murder of, sorry, off of mass murder of men, women, and children is no longer the blame of Joker fucking with her head during therapy sessions because he could tell that she had an interest in him that he could exploit, which he exploited the fuck out of until she was brainwashed enough to become completely obsessed with Joker and willing, willingly did whatever horrific act he wanted her to do because of the mind fucking he did to her, which is why in her comic, she hates what the Joker made her to be and wants to kill him, but she also accepts her willing role in all the shit she has done and decided to be a good guy, or more like an anti-hero, again, like Deadpool and Punisher, she, know, she knows she did fucked up shit and even enjoyed doing it. She knows she is also to blame for allowing it to go as far as it did. This episode basically takes away all that depth and replace it with a... I, I still don't know what the fuck they was trying to do. I, I really don't. Uh, uh, they, they're trying to replace it, uh, to I guess, to make it seem like she is her own person. And this is how she finds out who she is. But this is who she is now after the Joker because of the Joker. She was not... An insane psycho as a kid, which is probably why they are making it seem like she was always crazy as a way uh, of moving the story along while allowing her to remain Harley. However, to go this route and have her childhood where she is being normal would defeat what they are trying to do because... Because I'm like... I guess I got, I guess I got tired of writing this shit. Anyway... If they were to make Harley's childhood normal, then whatever the, the, this weird thing that they're trying to do to make it seem like Harley has always been crazy and that uh, Joker 
uh, uh, had no uh, 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 no cause in her becoming Harley Quinn and her uh, 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 being this insane, homicidal, psychotic person is not the fault of the Joker and that she has always been like this. That is insane. And it's completely stupid. There is so much depth involved with Harley. And it's because of the Joker. She had the fascination with Joker. Joker exploited that fascination. He exploited the hell out of it. Slowly working his way into her mind and making her the making her Harleen, uh, Harley uh, Quinn. Which is why she's not Harleen Quinzel anymore. Sometimes she has arguments with her other self. In, in the show, they do that, which I love. Harley is having conversations with Harleen, her original self, the normal self. She was never an insane, psychotic brat. Harley Quinn was made this way by the Joker. Everything she's ever done, you can attribute it because of the Joker. Which is why Batman, literally, why Batman is constantly, I repeat, constantly trying to help Harley. Batman has tried to help Harley. Batman has tried to constantly tell her to try to get her to wake up. Basically the same way Ivy did in this show. Batman tried to do the same thing. Try to get her to realize that Bat that Joker doesn't love you. Joker doesn't care for you. Batman understands that Harley is the way she is because of the Joker. So he tries to help her any way he can. But she does so much shit that he has no choice but to try to give these little talks to try to get through to her while also locking her crazy ass up. So it's like to literally try to make an episode that literally takes all that depth that makes Harley Quinn such a lovable fucking character and try to switch it and be like, uh, no, Harley Quinn and all the people she's murdered, all the, the, the way, the reason why she's so fucking crazy, the reason why she did all this fucked up shit, these horrible fucking things. No, it's not because the Joker made her this way. No, it's because Harley is Harley. It's because Harley was always fucking crazy. Harley was always a homicidal maniac. Harley has no chance of redemption. Harley has no chance of redemption if this is how she's always been. Which, which literally, the reason why it works for Harley to now hate the Joker and wants to be in, and is an anti-hero in the comics right now, the reason that works is because it was all because of Joker is the reason why she is the way she is. She cannot fix it. It, it. It's done. It's over with. Harley is Harley now. She can't go back to being Harleen Quinzel. She can't. She's too fucked in the head and that's because of the fucking Joker. But because of that, she realized it and she had a chance for redemption and she became an anti-hero. But when you make an episode that literally takes away all that depth, that means all the blame for all those deaths, all those murders, all the fucked up things she's did is no longer on Joker's shoulders. All the weight of all that shit is on her. All of it. All of it is on her. Yes, again, she willingly did this shit. And she knows she willingly did it. But here's the thing. It was because of what the Joker did to her. It's basically like Stockholm Syndrome. Okay? That's basically like what the fuck it was. So it, it's like... It's the blame is on Joker. Allowing Harley some, some kind of redemption to get away from that shit. Which they granted her. But when you do an episode like this, which switches that whole dynamic up and takes away all that depth of her that makes Harley Quinn Harley Quinn, you just ruined all that shit. 
All the blame is now on Harley. All of it. Why would you do that? Why? I, I don't understand why they would do that. They just they, they just fucked up the character of Harley. Harley Quinn, they just they, they did that. It was like I, I, I didn't under I don't understand. I can't ever understand the reasoning behind this shit. I, I really, really cannot. <sighs> anyway, episode five was like it was entertaining. It was an entertaining episode. But paying attention to the episode and everything that's going on and just seeing this shit and realizing how they're fucking up the character Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn with this weird ass fucking Harley is her own character and shit and and Joker didn't make her the way she is she is Harley is Harley and it's like Harley isn't even really Harley Harley is the personality that the Joker helped create Harleen Quinzel is the real personality. Harley Quinn is the result of Joker fucking with Harleen's mind. Which is why in this episode they made her, made it seem like Harley was always a fucking psycho. So that they can somehow fit in the narr narrative that Harley is her own woman. And it it's like she's fucking not actually. She's literally the Joker's woman. Joker made her who she is literally. Which, and again, in the comics, she had a chance for redemption. She became an anti-hero in that, in that shape and form. She is still a creation of Joker's madness. But she became something different. She took back who she was, in a sense. She's still the psychopath, Harley, but she's not all that crazy anymore. She's all about helping people. As much as she can. But again. She's still Harley. So sometimes that helping people. Results in her bashing someone's fucking head in. With a bat or a mallet. Because she's fucking Harley Quinn. But anyway. Besides the fucking headache. That episode 5 gave me. I still enjoyed episode 5. And I'm actually enjoying the entire fucking thing so far. I'm waiting for the other, other episodes, but this is going to be my last last video trying to review this shit, hopefully, because every show has its pros and cons, especially their episodes. Jesus Christ, episodes. But, <laughs> yeah. I can only see this shit getting either better or, you know, it can go downhill. I don't know, because episode five, Jesus Christ, I don't, I don't... They're throwing shit in these episodes that somewhat aren't necessary and kind of don't make sense. Again, Queen of Fables, that, again, that shit didn't make sense. What they're doing with Harley in episode five doesn't make sense and it kind of just, just ruins any deepness that the character had. But anyway, I'm done.